What's up everybody? I'm Anthony, this is Get Fed Nutrition, and today I'm talking about 10 reasons why home gyms are better than a gym membership. So let's get into it. All right, so first I wanna start by saying that home gyms are a great thing. However, there are some major benefits to having a gym membership as well. So hang around to the end of the video and I will talk about the reasons a home gym might not be for you. However, I think they are for a lot of people. So here are the 10 reasons why. All right, so my top number one reason for why home gyms are better than a gym membership is going to be travel. So this one probably comes across a little bit obvious. When you have a home gym, you don't have to travel to the gym. I know I personally um, drive all over the city all day for work and it's I don't wanna spend another minute in my car if I don't have to. So having a home gym is super beneficial. I think it can help you stay on track a little bit better because obviously driving 20 minutes to the gym, driving 20 minutes home, doing an hour workout, changing, showering, you know, that all adds up to be like two hours of your day just to go and work out. Now, when you have a home gym, you can just come home straight from work or anytime you're at home and feel like working out, you just go to the basement or wherever your home gym is set up and you do your workout and <laughs> I don't know about you, but life's too short. I definitely uh, value my time. My time is worth so much to me. And I think that is guaranteed the biggest reason. Travel is definitely my biggest reason at least. So let's get into number two. All right, so my second biggest reason for having a home gym is actually going to be cost. So that might sound a little bit crazy to some of you at first, but when you buy a home gym, you're actually buying assets that you can sell later down the road. If you decide to stop doing fitness or you need to free up space in your home, we'll touch on space a little bit later. But when you buy gym equipment, uh, typically you can sell it for about 50% of what you bought it for at least. A lot of the time you can get more like 75% and uh, you're really protecting your investment a little bit more. So the average gym membership here in Calgary, probably across Canada, is about $500 to $1,000 a month. And some of them actually charge you an initiation fee. Um, I used to have a membership at uh, World Health and the initiation fee was $200. A lot of the time you can get them to waive that for you, but still uh, $1,200 a year for your first year is quite a bit of money, especially considering that right now on my website, getfednutrition.com you can go to the home gym page i have an entire page that lays out step by step how to buy a home gym as affordably as possible and everything you need to do so so definitely go and check that out if you're thinking about purchasing a home gym it will save you some money it will definitely save you some time and research i've already done it all so just consider checking that out so on that page the total for all the necessary equipment is $935 Canadian at the time of making this video, which is less than one year membership at some gyms. So right off the bat, it's cheaper in some cases to have a home gym than to not. All right, so number three is going to be safe zone. So what do I mean by safe zone? Well, this one's not gonna to apply to everyone, obviously, but, um, a lot of people actually feel anxiety when they go to the gym. They don't want people looking at them, especially women. That's why there's all women gyms, because they don't want creepy guys staring at them while they're squatting and stuff like that. So for most people, our homes are our safe zones. It's a judgment-free environment where you can work out uh, without having to think about what other people are thinking. Again, this doesn't apply to everyone, but uh, a fair amount of people do uh, avoid the gym because they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want other people seeing them lift small amounts of weight or whatever. There's a lot of mental game involved there. So number three is going to be a safe zone. Uh, it's not a huge one for everyone, but for the people it does affect, it is a big one. So that's why it's number three. All right. So number four is going to be clean environment. So what do I mean by that? Well, this one again is going to pertain to some a little bit more than others. You can use me as an example. 
I personally take a drug called Humira. It's an immunosuppressant um, that works by suppressing my immune system. I take it to manage my Crohn's disease and it's used for some other things as well. But basically at any given time, my immune system is compromised. So I have to be extra careful not to be around sick people and just try to avoid you know, getting sick in general. So for me personally, or anyone else in a similar situation, this is going to be a very big issue because at the gym, you're surrounded by people, a lot of, who, a lot of which aren't washing their hands all the time. Uh, the equipment definitely is not getting wiped down as often as it should be, especially the bars. It's basically a breeding ground for viruses and bacteria and stuff like that. So whether or not you're prone to illness, it's definitely an environment where there's more people um, sharing the air and just using equipment. You're more likely to get sick when you put yourself in those environments. So number four is definitely a big one for me, maybe not for everyone, but when you work out at home, you are guaranteed to have a clean environment and clean equipment. Okay, so number five actually ties into the last one. I kind of mentioned it there, and that is going to be clean equipment. So we talked about uh, getting sick in the last one, but there's another aspect to this. So I'm sure if you go to the gym, you've used a bench before where some guy didn't wipe up after and you can just see his sweaty, greasy head mark and sweat stains all over the bench. We've all been there and it's pretty nasty. So I don't know about you guys. I definitely don't like cleaning up after someone else. And I know that sometimes when I've been to the gym in the past and had to wipe a bench because I'm not gonna lay down on that. There's times where the gym is really busy. The, the benches are in hot demand. And if you go to get the towel and cleaning stuff to wipe it down, someone might come and snag that who doesn't care about it, right? So you have a chance of missing out on your equipment or potentially having a confrontation with someone who just snagged your bench. And it's just a nice thing to work out at home and never have to deal with having clean equipment because you keep it clean, right? All right, so number six is going to be listen to your music. So this one might not be a big issue at all, really. Um, you can always wear headphones in the gym and some people probably like listening to headphones instead. I myself don't like listening to headphones. I don't like having the wires, even the earbuds. I find that they just don't, they aren't comfortable. I'd rather just have music playing in the background if I'm gonna be listening to music. And so at the gym, you're limited to what the gym wants to play, whoever's controlling the playlist there. So at your house, you obviously get to play your music, whatever you want to listen to, what gets you pumped up, which can in turn lead to a better workout. You know, if you're energized from listening to your own music, that's gonna be a bonus for sure. And if you're not having to fight with chords and stuff, that's gonna help your workout also. Again, this is not an issue for some people. I personally like just having my own music play in the background. So that's number six. Let's move on to number seven. All right, so number seven is going to be make all the noise you want. And so if you're using the last one, number six, and playing your music, you can play it as loud as you want, no problem. Um, this one is mostly for all the deadlifters out there. If you're lifting weights and dropping them, uh, A, you're allowed to do that in your own house, and B, there's no one around to tell you to be quiet. You can make all of the noise you want. And yes, in a gym, you're allowed to make noise, but you're gonna get some looks a lot of the time the people around you don't want you making noise and I would just personally rather not annoy everyone and I'm typically not too noisy when I work out but if you're someone who likes to scream and drop weights and stuff like that a home gym is going to be nice for making noise. Okay so number eight is going to be wear whatever. Okay so most people when they work out just wear shorts or whatever they want anyways when they go to the gym. But some people, I'm not one of them, but some people like to work out with their shirts off, maybe in the summer. And most gyms won't allow you to do that. So if you're one of those people who likes to work out with your shirt off, or maybe you wanna work out naked or in your underwear or something like that, you're definitely allowed to wear whatever you want in your own house. So you don't have to worry about other people looking at you um, you won't have to worry about getting in trouble and just wear whatever you want. 
All right, so this one was supposed to be number three on the list. I accidentally skipped over it somehow. So now it's gonna be number nine, and that is no waiting. No. So we've all been there. When you go to the gym, especially at peak hours, when it's really busy and full of people, um, a lot of the time, bench press is always taken, squat racks are taken, and really all the equipment just is taken and you have to wait for your turn to use it. Some guy might be doing max rep sets, you're waiting for five minutes in between sets for him, and you can't really work in in that situation because he might be way stronger than you or whatever. So when you work out at home, there's no waiting for equipment. I, like I said before, I value my time a lot. It's very important to me. And I just don't want to be wasting time waiting to use the equipment. So if you can have a gym at home and you're fortunate enough to do that, then not waiting is a huge benefit for the home gym. All right, so this is another one for proper gym etiquette. And that is the equipment is put away. Put away the equipment. So again, we've all been there, we're in the gym, it's it's busy, it's peak hour, and some people are not putting their equipment away. You're walking around, especially at the dumbbell racks, you're walking around for, you know, five minutes looking for a dumbbell that's just not there. You can see that no one's using it, but you're not sure where it is. Again, this isn't a super big issue, and you can time when you go to the gym a lot of the time a little better. You don't have to go right after work. I guess some people do. Either way, it's just nice to always have your equipment where it's supposed to be. Again, this boils down to time. You're not wasting time walking around looking for equipment or waiting for equipment. It's just exactly where it needs to be, neatly organized, where you put it last. And it's just a major benefit to having a home gym. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Those are my top 10 reasons why home gyms are better than a gym membership. And like I said in the beginning of the video, now it's time to talk about the downsides to a home gym. So let's get into that. Okay, so the first downside to having a home gym is obviously going to be space. Yeah. Space is a big concern for, well, a lot of people. If you don't have a house with a basement or somewhere that you can put a gym, maybe a garage, uh, that's going to be a real problem for you. So that might be one reason that you don't want to get a gym, or maybe you want one, but you just don't have the space. Uh, you're never gonna have that problem with a gym membership. So that is one bonus for a membership. There are workarounds. I know that when I used, I don't have a gym membership anymore, but when I used to, um, I still had home gym equipment so I could do uh, body weight exercises and I had dumbbells and I actually had a bench press and stuff like that still, but there are ways that you can make equipment fit even into a small apartment. I know that you can get benches that fold up that can you can literally tuck into a closet when you're not using them or under your bed or something. There's really a lot that you can do with a set of dumbbells and a bench. And if you want to take it a step further, you can throw in things like uh, resistance bands. There's really a lot that you can do with a limited amount of space if you are someone who doesn't want to go to the gym. For a squat rack and an Olympic bar, an Olympic bar is seven feet wide, and that basically means you're going to need at least, I would say nine feet of space width wise to have a squat rack or a bench press or anything with an Olympic bar. I will put a picture on the screen here if I still have it of my apartment that I was renting before, and it was a basement suite, and there was just enough space to have my squat rack where I wanted to have it. And there was basically like a foot maybe a little bit more than a foot of room on either side of the bar and it was just enough to kind of get in there get the plates on and off and that's all i needed so you will need at least nine eight to nine feet of space and i would recommend probably 10 or 11 feet of space to fit a squat rack or something conveniently space is definitely a big concern but there are workarounds all right so the second biggest reason that a gym membership might be the way to go for you is that with a home gym, there are no bonuses. What do I mean by that? When you get a gym membership, a lot of the time the gyms have saunas, steam rooms, pools, sport courts. Uh, sometimes they have bars and restaurants in them. Just all those sort of nice bonuses that you get with a gym membership uh, that you're not gonna get when you work out at home. Obviously some people can afford um, to have saunas and steam rooms and even pools. Uh, some people do have that stuff, 
but the general population does not. And so if those things are important to you, then you might want to consider a gym membership. Um, those things aren't typically too important to me. And if I want to go and use a sauna or a pool or something, there's always somewhere that I can go and do that for relatively cheap. But a lot of people like to swim and play sports and stuff like that. So those are major reasons why a gym membership might be the way to go for you. All right, so this is definitely a very good reason to want a gym membership, either in conjunction with having a home gym or not having a home gym at all. Uh, and that is going to be limited equipment. So. Obviously, when you work out at home, depending on your budget and the type of home gym you have, you're going to be limited to a lot of the time free weight exercises. You might have a cable system at home. If you want to buy that, then that's awesome. And I wish I had some cables at home right now. A lot of the time squat racks will come with lat pull downs and stuff like that. That's pretty common. But some of the more aggressive cable systems, you're going to probably have to get a gym membership. At that point, it's not really going to be financially feasible to have it at home. Um, it's going to make more sense to have a gym membership. I personally don't think you need cables ever at all. Uh, they do provide uh, a unique form of resistance for your body that you can't get with free weights. So there is a major benefit to using them. And yeah, it's one, it's definitely a good reason to have a gym membership if you can't afford to have cables, which most people can't. So limited equipment is a big con for the home gym, but I do think that you don't really need it to build a good physique. And yeah, that's just what I think about that. So let's move on to number four. Okay, so number four is going to be no social. So obviously with a home gym, this is a benefit for some people, some people it's not. And that is that there is no social atmosphere. Um, a lot of people like going to the gym because people are looking at them, because they're surrounded by other people working out. It gives them motivation. Also going to the gym can act as a way to just, you know, force them to work out. So not having a social atmosphere is a big deal for some people. And if you're one of those people, then obviously you're going to have to have a gym membership. Unless you have a bunch of friends over working out at your home gym, uh, you're not going to get a social environment working out in your basement. So if you're one of those people, get a gym membership for sure. All right, so the last downside to having a home gym that I can think of is going to be no classes. Okay, so when you're working out at home, unless you're using YouTube videos, there's probably, there's no classes for you to take. There's no spin cycle classes if you're into that or whatever classes the gym offers. This one kind of ties back into the bonuses. Uh, you don't get those when you work out at home. You also don't have access to trainers. I mean, you can hire trainers to come to your house and train you, but there aren't trainers walking around. Some gyms allow you to ask trainers questions and stuff like that. Also, when you sign up at gyms, a lot of the time you get a free session or three, or sometimes even a week of free sessions with a trainer just to learn how to work out and stuff like that. So that can be a good reason to join a gym and not work out at home. That being said, if you do want to take advantage of some of those um, initiation benefits at gyms, they really are giving them away a lot of the time because they want to get people in the door. Something you can do uh, is sign up for a free trial and go and take advantage of the training that they offer. And then once you know how to use the equipment and do the exercises and supplement that with YouTube videos, then you just cancel or don't follow through with it and you get a home gym and you work out at home. All right, so those are my top 10 reasons why I think a home gym is better than a gym membership and the five reasons why I think you might wanna consider a gym membership over a home gym. That being said, um, there are benefits to both, of course, and if you can afford to have a gym membership and a home gym, that is obviously the ideal situation, but if you're going to pick one, like most people will, I personally would go with the home gym. It suits my lifestyle better, but it definitely comes down to your lifestyle and what suits you uh, better. So this is not a video meant to bash uh, gym memberships. A lot of people love going to the gym. It gives them motivation and inspiration. And so if that's you, that's fantastic. 
I just personally prefer a home gym. So whether you're looking to purchase a home gym or you're just weighing the pros and cons, if you found this video helpful or you just enjoyed watching, please remember to leave a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel a lot and I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Definitely click the link in the description below to check out the page on my website with all of the fitness equipment information if you are looking to purchase a gym. And uh, like always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for what's to come.